Hello, everyone. My name is Ian Johnson. I'm excited to share my project, Latent Scope. And before we get into a, a live demo, which will also hopefully work, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about um, how I got started with this. So back in 2016, I was working at Google, and I had the great fortune to co-author a few papers on this newly formed Distill publication. And in that process, I learned uh, two incredibly powerful concepts. The first of which is dimensionality reduction. So the idea with dimensionality reduction algorithms like TSNE and UMAP is that if you have data points that are similar in high dimensions, these algorithms can help you put them close together in two dimensions. And what's more high dimensional than the in internal representations of machine learning models? So that second uh, powerful concept is the, the idea that these models are learning all these patterns, but we can actually extract those patterns from the hidden states. And one way you can do that is that you can make a map of concepts that the models learned by applying dimensionality reduction to the hidden states. And this really became clear to me when I, I worked on open sourcing uh, quick draw data set and the sketch RNN model. And so for me, I think that a hand-drawn sketch is probably like the most unstructured data that you could think of. But the sketch RNN model was actually able to, to find a lot of uh, structure and patterns in it. And to kind of show an example, this is a map of the activations uh, from the sketch RNN network on drawings of faces, I think like 100,000 or so. And in this little corner that's highlighted, these are all uh, the same, you know, the kinds of faces that are, are in this place of the map. These kind of meh faces, right? But then in this corner, we get these, you know, great sketches, creative. Honestly, like, I wouldn't be able to prompt, let alone, like, you know, make a SQL query that would give me this group of sketches. But the model sees the similarity, and, and you know, your eyes do too, right? So. Seeing the potential of these techniques, I started applying it to production data. Um, we, I led a project at Google Cloud where we mapped out user behaviors of like millions of users across hundreds of products. Uh, later, I worked at Stability AI do, using the same techniques to curate um, high, high signal training data from user generations. But then I left Stability and I left Google and found myself GPU poor. <laughs> You know, hit a scaling wall. Um, but then a funny thing happened, right? I looked around, and I saw that you didn't really need a cluster of H100s to be um, using embeddings on you know, lots of production data. You could grab an open source um, embedding model from Hugging Face, run it on the CPU, and you know, make a rag, a rag production pipeline. But you know, a lot of people are doing this but don't know what their data looks like when they are. So at the beginning of this year, I started building an open source tool, Latent Scope, that you can install and run locally. And I want to do a quick demo of what that looks like. OK, so this is the app you get once you start up the server you know, after you pip install it. And for the sake of time, I'm going to show a small data set, a CSV. You can also bring in, you know, use a Python API and put a whole data frame in there. Um, but anyway, this one is survey free response answers for a, a survey about data visualization work. And so we're going to choose the answer column because that's where we want to find our patterns and the answers people made. We'll use you know, one of the more popular sentence transformers on Hugging Face and generate an embedding. This will only take a couple of seconds, you know, fingers crossed. Um, on a few hundred rows here. So now we have our embeddings. Move to the next step. We want to create our map. So this is applying the dimensionality reduction I talked about. And with you know, this is just running on the CPU. Um, also takes a few seconds for a, a small data set. But you know, if you do your retrieval part of RAG and you search for something like good design, you see that you know all these answers where people thought oh, good design takes real effort and time. Uh, good design is worth the time and effort and expense. You can tell these you know, people are frustrated by their managers. Uh, <laughs> but these answers show up in a cluster, right? And that's kind of what you hope for and what you want. But you kind of want all the clusters instead of having to find them one by one. So we run HDB scan across everything. 
also CPU, also quickly. And then the last thing is you have these clusters. It'd be nice if they were labeled, you know, enter LLMs. Uh, we support Olama if you have it installed, uh, hugging face models, and then shout out to Llama file. You can put your survey uh, URL in there. And, um, you know, who cares about the API keys, right? So for the sake of time, I'm just going to do uh, this really quick CPU top words um, thing from the NLTK. And then, you know, you've run through this whole process. We package it up and save it. You could give it a name and description. Uh, but you end up in this exploring interface where you can kind of, you know, zoom around. But to show this, uh, and with the little time I have left, instead of exploring this, I want to show a much cooler data set, which just came out from our, our friends at uh, Playus. So this is 100,000 rows um, from the common corpus. And it's embedded with the Gina embeddings v3, which is a multilingual model. Right, so this is a multilingual data set and is embedded with a multilingual model. And something I think that's really cool is that if you, let's say, look at this cluster, these are like scientific descriptions of animals and plants, and they're in all different languages, right? So, you know, this one's probably about some kind of insect. Um, down here somewhere I found one in Dutch, which I could read. There's German, right? So, you know, still mind-blowing to me that the same concepts are represented um, in different languages in the, same, in the same way in these models. One other thing I want to show real quick is that, you know, you see that this latent space is kind of split into these two con continents. Um, if you actually filter by, you know, the data source, right, the, the common corpus has, has many different things, this big continent to the north is a, a lot of the GitHub code. And then, um, some of the other stuff, like if you look at uh, US public domain newspapers down there, or if you want to see French public domain newspapers right, right next to them. So there's a lot more stuff I'd love to show. Uh, I can do it at the thing there. You can also, if you do install this, easily download these scopes. And I'd just like to thank the Mozilla Builders program for uh, a lot of support. I mean. The grant allowed us to, to hire um, a friend and colleague to, to really accelerate the, the app, but also a lot of design and, and program help from the team. And you know, if you or someone you love wants to look closer at your data, please get in touch. Um, I'm looking for uh, organizations that want to scale these techniques and, and you know, look at their data closer, as well as continued grant funding to support the, the open source product, uh, project. All right, thank you very much.